All right, good morning, students. So let's talk about uh, that homework. All right, problem number one gives us two classes, one called performer and one called senior. Uh, senior extends performer, which means uh, it inherits from it. Therefore, senior is the uh, subclass or child class, and performer is the super or the parent. All right, now if uh, we make two things, one which is a performer and the other which is a senior well it that then becomes important for how they sing and how they act so thus the most important part of this to notice is the fact that these are uh, oops, that these are different uh, classes that they're referencing which is fine, even though they're both declared as this class, it's okay if we initialize one of them as a child class, you are allowed to do that. You are allowed to declare it as a parent and initialize it as a child. Remember, because the child class extends from the parent, it has, it is technically also that class. All right, now if we're going to go ahead and do perform per dot act, Per is our performer. Uh, that one's actually pretty easy to figure out. The result of calling pair.act is that it first goes into the act method. It's going to print bow. So that's going to be our. There we go. That's going to be our first word printed. I'll make sure that's lowercase. All right. Then it goes to the perform method, which is right here. The next thing perform does is act. And that is it. Now, here's the one that gets a little more trickier. And I think some of you some of you got pretty close on this one. Um, it was interesting to see how you approached it. And I'm really glad some of you approached it the way that you did. But now let's go ahead and learn that the uh, what would actually happen. All right, sing is a singer. Singer's act method asks her first to rise. And I said, and I said her. I don't know if it's a her or him. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, so first thing the singer does is rise. Then does super dot act. Now it's very important that that super call is there, because that means it goes to the super class to call the act method. The next thing, so it goes up here to act. Now, from here, it then is going to print out bow. So we've got rise, then bow and then perform. Now notice, this is the trickier part. And I'll show you in code to prove this to you. But it doesn't do this method. No. It would need a super to do that. It does this one. All right, it goes back to the senior class and does the perform method. So then it does rise, bow, aria, and then does the super perform method, so it act, goes back up to act. And this should probably say like opera singer instead of singer. I'm just now realizing because opera is more the performance. But anyways, I'm getting off to off to outfit. All right, so um, this act was called by this perform, so it goes back to here, and then that one's finished. This perform was called called by this act, which is now finished. And it was called by here. So now we're at here finally with Encore. And there we are. So that's what ends up happening. And that's what those results do. Yeah, so notice that. Uh, when it's a senior and you use perform, even if you're in the other class, still call senior. I'll show you in Dr. Java right over here. Um, I put together just those into code. And let me make that look decent. There we go. All right, now if we were to compile and run that, as you can see, we get bow and act, and then rise, bow, aria, act, encore. All right, and that was number one, or number one and two, I should say. Okay, number three, I think would be best to show with some uh, visuals. But, oh well, okay. So 
we have two arrays, as you can see. Two arrays of integers, whole numbers, all that. All right, first line of code that happens is, actually, you know what? We're going to go ahead and we're going we're gonna to put these in there. So, you know, it's uh, just so that way we have something that'll that'll work for us. I left these here so that way in the hopes that you would go ahead and use them. Best with pencil, but I mean you can also just cross them out with pen. All right, first thing that happens is R2 equals R1. Hopefully this doesn't hurt your brain too much. What it means is we make them equal the same thing. Then we go ahead and set array 2 at 3 equal to 0. Now this is the part where most of you probably went 0, 1, 2, 3, and you were fine, and then you change that to 0, and then you were half correct. The true answer is this, and I'll show you why. Firstly, I'm going to change something what I did up here. Array 2 equals array 1 doesn't really make it do this, it makes it do this. It makes it equal not just the values, but the actual reference, the place in memory.